YouTube, Arlene here. It's been a while since you guys have just seen me filming on my own. Uh, at, if you're a fan of the channel, you know from our updates, uh, I've been going through quite a bit over the past year and a half or so. Um, but we are slowly healing, getting to a more stable place, which is great. Um, so please bear with me while I try to kind of get back into the swing of things, making some videos on my own and posting to the channel. Obviously, I'm still doing a lot of stuff with James this year. You'll be seeing a lot more content coming out from us in the next couple of months. Um, but I wanted to first make sure that I actually catch up on all the content that I have promised you guys over the past two years or so. My sincerest apologies. Uh, so please bear with me. Uh, first, I want to kind of just jump right into it. As you can see from the title of this video, uh, in the very first week of March of last year, 2022, uh, my boyfriend and I went to the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser at Disney World. Now, again, year and a half ago, and I know unfortunately it is now a closing attraction, which saddens me deeply. I know the last voyage is the last weekend of September. So again, sorry about the delay, delay on this uh, release of this video, but I still want to make sure that I get the information out there because I do think it is very helpful in either planning future trips that you might have going to Disney or to other potential LARPs. Um, again, I know that it is closing and I, it, it truly does sadden me deeply because I loved every minute of this trip. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers away. I'll be happy to make another video in the future kind of going over the storyline that at least I participated in. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but I want to at least get out one video reviewing what it's like to be part of this type of experience. I really do hope that Disney considers making something like this again in the future so we can kind of use these tips and tricks that I'm going to outline in this video for you guys uh, in some other fashion. Again, I know one of the big things here was the cost of money. It was a lot, but I have to say, you get your money's worth. It is worth every penny. Um, over the past year and a half, my boyfriend have been, and I have still been nonstop talking about it to all of our friends and family. So if you have the chance, I highly recommend it. Um, so for any type of LARP experience like this, and hopefully something like this again in the future shows up, or if you're going on one of the last few voyages in the next month or, a month or so, um, please take these tips and tricks into consideration when planning. Uh, and again, once it officially does close down, I'll be more than happy to do another video reviewing the actual storyline that happens during the Galactic Star Cruiser. Um, and the actual part that ah, fills me with so much joy and glee. <laughs> um, so first off, prep. For any type of Disney vacation, First things first, know that 60 days before your reservation starts, that's when you need to get back onto your account after you've booked everything to actually start making your reservations for all the experiences in the park. Um, so for us, what we did is we reserved uh, building our own lightsabers, uh, going to the droid depot to build our own droids, going to Oga's Cantina, which I'll get to a side note about that in a moment. Um, and then there's also the optional captain's table, uh, which was an added extra that we didn't get to go to, but that I know some people uh, were able to reserve as part of their Galactic Star Cruiser adventure. Um, so again, kind of as I mentioned before, everyone has their own storyline that they're a part of. Everyone has a completely different experience, which is the coolest thing in the world to me. You are completely immersed in this story, in this universe, and your adventure is not gonna be the same as anybody else's, um, but you will be part of an adventure of your own story. Um, so being part of the captain's table, they got introduced to, I think, a few elite extra things, and again, got to work with the captain specifically as part of their storyline. Um, and then, as I mentioned, adding in Oga's Cantina, we got to do a special kind of side quest, if you will, uh, when going into the actual park. Um, 
and again, I'll go more into it later when I get more into the arrival portion. Um, but at Ovis Cantina, if you book something special there, because it does get booked up very quickly, uh, you will have a different interaction with the bar staff there that no one else will have, which is very cool. So for specifically the Galactic Star Cruiser, make sure you jump onto your website 60 days prior to your uh, prior to the first day of your reservation uh, and make sure you go through that full checklist of all the different reservations that you can do. Um, so lightsaber, Joy Depot, Oga's, Oga's Cantina, and Captain's Table, optional. Um, the lightsaber, Joy Depot, and Oga's Cantina were certainly totally worth it. Uh, I get to have quite a few things to take home with me. Uh, so I'll show you guys those in some pictures later when I show you my cosplay of it that I wore during the event, um, which also had a huge impact on my story. I'm sorry, I know I'm building so much up that I'm not going into full detail, detail of, but I want to again give you no spoilers so you can properly enjoy a LARPing experience like this. Um, so yeah, next, uh, so we didn't get to experience this portion uh, but beforehand, because because we were there the first weekend it was open, we didn't get all the little extras. Um, but I did see that afterwards, uh, before our departure, we could have gone gotten a link to an exclusive online store uh, where we could get additional accessories and clothing to LARP in. Live action role playing, by the way, is what LARP stands for, if I didn't say that earlier. Um, so it was very interesting that people that are attending the Galactic Star Cruiser get their own exclusive shop. Uh, but it did look like that shop is also the exact same one that they have inside of the Star Cruiser. Um, so if you aren't able to get at the link beforehand, you can certainly pick it up there. But totally up to you how you want to prepare for it. We didn't have access to that link until after we had left. Uh, I guess that was a feature they decided to put in literally right afterwards. Um, but that is something new that they added. So please be free to go for it. And then on to costumes. So as I was looking through my itinerary, they did give you very kind of basic outline of what you'd be doing. It did end up changing when we got there um, in terms of because they don't know what storyline you're going to be a part of, uh, whether you're going to be quote unquote light side, dark side, or scoundrel. Um, they add in, again, personalize it to you, to what your personality is and what you want to get out of the story. Um, so just so you know, day one is your arrival. Uh, I kind of did a take on Han Solo crossed with R2, primarily focusing on R2. I'll show you an image here. I uh, just wore a very billowy white shirt uh, with some gray pants. I want to be very comfortable traveling on the plane and uh, getting to the actual Star Cruiser itself. Um, and then I was able to find this absolutely adorable R2-D2 uh, waist cinch belt, uh, which really brought it together very quickly, very easily. Um, so I was very comfortable, was able to settle in very well, and again, very R2 inspired. And I thought it was very funny that when we were getting in line to check in and everything, um, there did seem to be a little trend, which I thought was very cute, uh, for a lot of couples specifically like us, there was definitely the Disney, uh, the major Disney fan, and then the major Star Wars fan. So there was always one of each in each couple, which was absolutely hysterical and wonderful. And we made quite a few friends along the way. Um, so again, just LARPing experiences in general, you're going to meet a lot of new people, which is so much fun. Um, and again, very like-minded people. They love the same things you love. Uh, so I was very happy to express R2. My boy for life. He's seriously the, he's such a good droid. I love him. <laughs> Since you're easily my, my most favorite Star Wars character, hands down. Um, so then going into day two, uh, I knew we were going to Batu, which means that we were traveling to the actual Disney park, uh, which is again included in the entire experience. They transport you um, from the ship at <laughs> so you're on a ship the entire time. They are fully immersive here. They really make you think you are up in space in a ship. Then you actually take a ship down to Batu. It's, it's really just a bus that you get on and it takes you there, but there are no windows. 
they completely submerse you like they might they have tv screens everywhere kind of showing outside of space they have like turbulence and things like that <laughs> to really make you feel like you're on a ship being uh transported from one place to the next um, which I thought was a very wonderful detail. Uh, so as soon as you arrive into the park, you don't see a park entrance, nothing. You go through a tunnel and you're in the Star Wars land of Hollywood Studios. Um, so you're immediately in Batu. And on this day, I decided to wear, wear my original character outfit, uh, which is based off of the Simplicity 8718 pattern. So you can see actually, uh, Primarily two of Ray's uh, most common uh, type of clothing. And then I guess this more Sith looking one as well. Uh, very leather based, but I was not gonna wear leather in the middle of Florida. Um, and I really, really liked this very simple outfit. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus a little bit more here. I don't think we can, um, but I unfortunately did not take many pictures. Um, sorry about that in advance, but I really wanted to stay very immersed uh, the entire time. So I'll take some pictures here, <laughs> inserted, uh, so you can see what my costume looked like. Let's just say I did get many compliments. People said I definitely blended in. Uh, they do have specific guidelines on their website for Disney parks. You can't have things be dragging behind you on the ground. So big, long Jedi cloaks they they need to be above your ankles like you, you it obviously it's a tripping hazard um but otherwise they're pretty flexible as long as you don't actually say you're a specific character you're usually pretty good to go unless i think you're under the age of 12 you're allowed to dress as like actually ray um i was not specifically ray this was not the color combo that she uses at all um i just saw it as i have her style type of clothing uh, but in my own particular colors that I prefer. So I was able to do that. I walked around. Everyone was very impressed, which gave me a bit of an ego boost. Um, and again, I won't say much, but it did play quite a role uh, when we were back on the ship later in the day, um, actually interacting with the cast and again, having that live action role play experience. Um, so it was very cool, very awesome. And this is easily my most favorite cosplay so far because it's so freaking comfortable. I actually wear these clothes very often now around the house um, because it's just so comfortable. <laughs> you guys know me, function over fashion every day. Uh, so for me, this has been a very functional outfit for me and I guess just get to use it as PJs and it's just so comfortable. I love it. Um, so highly recommend this particular pattern uh, in this style and so I made the top and the pants out of this lovely chocolate brown. Uh, I just want to kind of, I'm a big fan of blue and neutral, specifically brown neutrals. Those are just a color combination I really like. Um, so I liked the chocolate brown. I felt it really went in with what I knew was going to be the more dirt type of background. Um, and then the blue gauze is what it's called. It's, it's called a, uh, a gauze type of uh, fabric. I just loved the muted blue. It matched very well with that chocolate. Um, and of course, blue is my favorite color. So it was a perfect accent. Uh, and then the belt, I actually just got online at Amazon. Got it. I hate Amazon. I really don't like to promote it very much, but gosh, are they not convenient. Um, so it was just this wonderful wrap around cinch waist belt. Um, and so it just went perfectly with the rest of the outfit. Uh, and I was able to walk around very comfortably. I wasn't overheated. It was nice and breezy. Uh, and yeah, made kind of just walking around very, very comfortable, very natural. Um, and one thing I really, really want to press in this is wearing sensible shoes. Uh, I've learned from past Disney experiences and park stuff in general, wear comfortable shoes that you can walk for miles in. You tend <laughs> There's not a lot of walking on the Star Cruiser. We did do quite a bit of running around uh, doing different tasks, I'll say. I'll, that's as far as I'll go. Um, but it's really the parks. You want to make sure your feet are comfortable. You're hitting the ground running and you're not going to be any pain. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it so much more when you're comfortable. Comfort, please stress it. I cannot, <laughs> I, I cannot explain that enough. 
Um, so that's kind of what I have slated for prep when going to a LARP, uh, specifically for the Galactic Star Cruiser, but just in general, these are things to always keep in mind, making sure all your reservations are in order well ahead of time for Disney specifically 60 days. Um, and really think about your wardrobe. That's always going to be helpful in taking all the guesswork out of your actual day. Uh, and then actually just being able to enjoy your visit altogether. Next, I'm actually going into the actual arrival. This is the stuff you really won't know beforehand. So I really wanted to make sure to get this information out there. So for Disney specifically, uh, they had what they called the data pad. So you would actually download a specific app, the Disney, My Disney Experience app um, on your phone. They give you all this ahead of time, but this is everything to you. I mean, you stick to that data pad like it is your lifeline. Um, we actually took the option of using their phones rather than using ours. So they actually supplied us with our own separate cell phones provided by them that we gave back at the end of the trip, obviously. We didn't get to keep the phones. Um, but that phone already had our data loaded onto it, had our itinerary. That has everything. As you progress through the storyline, you're interacting with characters. All of these things get noted and it kind of, it helps to progress your part in the story. Um, and that has all the itinerary. It, it will change on you. Things will get added randomly. So keep that thing close by. They give you a charger and everything. We brought extra battery packs because we're Pokemon Go players. We know better. <laughs> um, so just stick to your data pad, anything and everything. That's where it's going to be. Um, again, as I mentioned before, when we first saw everything online, the day two on the calendar seemed pretty slated. Like it just seemed very clean, very like, you know, just roam around, have fun, which we definitely did get to just tour around, do whatever we wanted. But because we got so, we, at least I got very involved <laughs> uh, in the actual live action role playing portion. Um, that part of the calendar got filled up really quickly, um, which was really freaking cool if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> So don't let that fool you. Just know you will be kept busy, but you still have plenty of time to go back to your room and relax if you need to um, and take your time. Again, that's what I chose to do. My boyfriend, he definitely was totally okay with just sitting back and watching everything play out. Um, he, he, the way he puts it, he loved seeing me enjoying myself and being part of the story, but he just wanted to watch the story kind of unfold. Um, so you can be as involved as you want to be. It doesn't, you're still going to enjoy yourself. I 100% guarantee that. Um, but just keep in mind, even though the calendar, when you first see it might be a little calm, quote unquote, the second day, it will not be <laughs> if you don't want it to at least. Um, and then one additional thing, unfortunately the app, that part of the app that's called the data pad, uh, only works when you actually have an active reservation or at the park. But it turns out, I found out on the very last day, there was a hidden map. Uh, there was a little icon that you could click and brings up an actual hidden map of Batu. So when you went to the park, you could see all these different areas that I didn't get to see before. Um, we really wanted to do this again, hopefully in like the next few years, but now it's closing. I'm so sad. I really, really hope it comes back. Uh, I have that extra bit to, to go back and explore. Um, so that was just one additional thing. Always keep your eyes peeled, always. Um, and then as I mentioned, your participation level, you can be as chill as you want to be, uh, but obviously it's much easier, at least for me, it's much more fun when at least one person in the group that you end up getting kind of put together with is active, uh, <laughs> or at least listening. Um, I'll, I'll say that at a certain point, we were kind of interacting with the cast members there, as they're called, um, the people that are part of the story. We were going from one person to the next and they asked what's happening because they want to see that that's how they kind of find out who wants to be involved, who's really engaged in the story. If you know improv, live action role play, you need to keep it kind of moving. Um, so thankfully I was paying attention. It seemed I was the only one in the group that was. So I was able to communicate those bits of the story. So I beg of you, if you want the story to continue moving along, 
pay attention, please interact. Uh, that's kind of what the uh, cast members are there for is to kind of help pull you out of your shell. If you want to be enclosed, you're more than welcome to, uh, but please feel free to be expressive and live out that theater kid dream. Uh, if you have the chance to take it. Um, but one thing to really keep in mind specifically with the stories is that you never know how your trip is going to quote unquote end. Um, reason why, again, I didn't want to go into any spoilers is that my story might be different from yours. It was different from somebody else's. Uh, and our trip as a whole, it, so each individual there is going to have a different experience, but then each, uh, we'll say each launch, we'll say. So they do, I think two or three a week cause it's a three day thing. Um, every, every time they do a new trip with a new group of people for each of these different experiences, um, you get a different storyline, kind of. I know the base storyline is the same, but the ending might be different. So if the majority of people interact and want to help the Jedi order, <laughs> um, we'll say, not necessarily the Jedi, but uh, they, they're against the Empire. I'll put it that way. So they are against the Empire. They want to be part of the revolution, part of the light side, if you will. You'll have a different ending from those that are helping the Empire and they will have a darker ending um, or a dark side ending. And then, as I mentioned before, there are also the kind of scoundrels, the in-betweens, the Han Solos, if you will. Um, they're like, I don't want to be politically involved. No, 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 not my thing, but I still want to have fun and, you know, kind of what's in it for me kind of people. Um, <laughs> so there's, again, a variety for whatever you want to be. Go for it. Uh, I, <laughs> so even when watching the films, I am very uh, droid happy, <laughs> we'll say. Uh, R2, uh, as I said before, R2 is my favorite. Um, but I've always been, the droids, droids have rights, man. Why are they treated like trash? Like, I get it, they're just machines. But I feel they are more than machines. Nothing would happen without R2, is all I'm saying. Um, so I was very, droids rights, free the droids. I went, I went for it, man. I was like, this is my view. <laughs> I'm going to be vocal about it, even if it's not a main focal point to anybody else. It is a focal point to me. Um, so again, whichever kind of path you want to take, it does impact how the rest of the story goes. Um, so if you want to play the dark side of yourself, feel free. You might change the outcome of the story. And that's what's so freaking cool about this. Again, I know everyone was like the cost, the cost, but it's, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's the coolest thing. <laughs> You get to have an impact on a story that's part of this universe. This is still technically canon. Um, even though you have different endings and different ways that it all plans out, technically the story they tell on the Star Cruiser is canon. Like the ship is actually where Han and Leia went on their honeymoon. Little Easter eggs like that. It's so cool. Sorry, I'm geeking out. I'm full back here. Um, but yeah, so something to keep in mind if and when you get to go to something like this, uh, play your own character, seriously, like D&D. &D. Uh, whichever you want, you make an impact. Just know that, just like real life, there are real consequences, there are real results to your actions. Um, and I just think that's really, really cool. Uh, and then one additional thing I want to point out here, <clears throat> specifically, is you do have a droid in your room. Uh, there's a little computer panel. You can ask it questions. It's a great uh, AI for sure. Um, and we actually would just ran, like we were just chilling in our room at one point because we had a big lunch. <laughs> and we're like, let's sit down for a little bit. We did a lot of walking on Batu. Let's sit down. And all of a sudden I saw the blinking light um, and I clicked on it and it turns out the droid needed our help. Uh, so again, that was kind of more of the side quest thing, but those side quests really do add up across the ship. Um, but I think that was only something that we got to do. Uh, and you got to choose what you say, and it really enacted this entire additional story that you may not have been able to see, but it was still happening around you. Um, 
And I just thought that was really cool. So keep an eye on that in room droid. If you see that light flash, click on it. You never know what you're going to expect. And it might progress you further down the line uh, into your story. And then the next big thing I wanted to point out was this is very kid friendly, um, but it does not mean it excludes adults like uh, after hours, after everyone went to bed for the evening, there weren't any more scheduled events. We got to go to the on, uh, in cruise cantina. <laughs> uh, we got to play some sabbat. We met up with a few other people there. We got to go to the bar, have some pretty awesome, cool looking drinks and delicious food. Um, but then during the day, you could see the kids were having a blast. We saw quite a few kids actually go off on their own without their parents. Like these were young kids too, not like teenagers, like definitely under 10, but they were in a safe environment. They were well, like kind of in their element and they were sincerely enjoying themselves. They were not blocked by the story. If anything, honestly, kids were much like me, so well involved and they were in it. They were experiencing it because their imagines went wild. They loved being part of the Star Wars universe, as did I. Some adults, you know, again, they're like, they can't really open up their imagination that way. They're not out there to be imaginative and expressive and over the top. It's probably not something that's in their, you know, in their wheelhouse as they might have been when they were kids. So totally kid friendly, highly recommend for them. They probably enjoy it the most for sure, <laughs> but it is for every member of the family. Hands down, I don't know anyone that could have not liked this trip. Uh, there really was something for everyone, which I thought was just so great. So that's kind of the main things I really wanted to go over uh, to kind of get you guys excited about this type of thing. I really do hope Disney brings something like this back. Uh, it was, again, I know it was a lot of money, but they have the facility, which was so well decked out. Again, you felt very immersed in it. The cast members did a phenomenal job in really bringing you into the universe, into the story. Uh, it was, it was above and beyond. It truly was. It was worth every penny. I mean, all of your meals are included drink, alcoholic drinks, not so much. Um, but all of your meals are included. Your park ticket is included. You automatically get a fast pass to all of the rides in the Star Wars section of Hollywood Studios. Are you kidding me? Like it, and plus that, plus you have your room for those three days uh, and you get to do so many different activities. Again, I don't want to spoil any of it. Sorry, totally got cut off there. Uh, again, I'm trying to get back into this, so my camera battery died. Back on track here. Uh, but I think essentially I was saying it's worth every penny that you get back. Um, and I really do hope something like this comes back around again with all the amenities. Seriously, five star, five star dining, five star acting, uh, five star experience all the way. I have zero complaints. Um, I think the only last three tips I really wanted to cover very quickly. Um, one, so first you, I talked about the data pad originally, so that's the phone that you have with all of your itinerary. Uh, you will also get a data band. Um, essentially that's your kind of pass into the park usually, kind of your, your identifying uh, bracelet. Um, you can link your credit card to it. For us, it just made transactions a lot easier. Again. As we learned last year when I did uh, <laughs> when I did Rob's Cruella DeVille outfit, which is phenomenal, I refuse to do pockets ever again. Um, I love pockets. I prefer pockets. But sewing them is such a pain for me. <laughs> I will learn someday, I'm sure. But uh, I didn't want to have to carry a whole bunch of stuff with me. So I just linked my credit card to, to our bands. So we were able to check out of uh, everything just very quickly. Made things a little bit easier. Uh, and then also I want to apologize, but also not apologize at all. I don't have many photos or videos to show you. I know there are plenty of people around the internet that videotaped the experience and the story, but I did not because it is a 360 experience, 24 seven happening around you. And I didn't want to miss a single second of it. Um, and I could even tell the people filming, they couldn't film everything. They, they missed half the things that were going on. There's actually, 
again, without spoiling anything, uh, during one of the dinners, we, it, the, there was half the people who were not part of the main story, I'll say, for the day, were being part of something, part of an act um, in the front of the dinner. And it turns out we were actually being a distraction for this other part of the actor of of the uh, guests that were being part of that main story for the day. They were doing something else in the background, but you can see, like in people's videos, something happening in the background. Um, it's a 360 experience, and I feel like seeing it through a phone or through through a camera lens, you're gonna miss it. You're gonna miss all the different details happening around you. Uh, just, you couldn't capture it. Um, so I made the executive decision uh, to be part of the experience. So I'm sorry I couldn't share it with you, but I'm glad so if and when you get the chance to do it yourself, you have the chance to experience it. Um, so that's one thing. Again, I'm sorry I don't have the content for you, but I am not sorry because I got to see little things here and there out of the corner of my eye and pay attention to that rather than trying to pay attention to what I'm seeing through my phone because that's not giving me the, the entire view of everything that's happening in this story. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then the last thing, uh, my boyfriend is a smoker uh, and there's no smoking in the parks nor is there smoking on the Star Cruiser because you're inside of a building. So what he would have to do is he would uh, have to actually get onto the shuttle craft that took you back to Earth. Yes, they went in depth into this. So he had to go back to Earth to take his smoke break, then travel back to the shuttle craft, go back up into space, and get back onto the Star Cruiser. Um, <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, uh, but that's something if you do need to take smoke breaks, that's part of your routine, keep that in mind. And when you want to kind of plan those out, um, he was not the only one that did this. Uh, he actually made quite a few friends out there, which they were absolutely wonderful. Uh, so yeah, that's just another thing to kind of keep in mind. Um, I think that's really all I have to say. I'll be, if you guys tell me below, you want to hear my specific experience, which I will never forget. It was so much fun. <laughs> um, if you guys want me to share those kind of quote unquote spoilers with you guys, tell you what my experience and my part of the story was, I'd be more than happy to leave us comments below. Um, again, I know I'm sorry it's so late. <laughs> so excuse me, I'm sorry, I need to take care of my mental and physical health first. Uh, and I'm finally on the up and up on that. And I'm currently in my work from home office. Uh, so it's not quite decked out at the moment. I just have my Lego flowers and the painting I made at work. <laughs> Yes, I have a very fun job. Um, so that's just right now, but you will see this room transforming and also my crafting services inside the house will be changing soon as well. Uh, I can't wait to show you guys those and all the projects I do have planned. Uh, and I do plan on making up all those videos that I have promised over the past two years or so. Uh, so this is just the first one. I hope you guys like it. I hope you're able to take just any of these tips and tricks and apply them not just to the Galactic Star Cruiser, but also to LARPs and Disney vacations as well, uh, and any type of cosplay interaction for the, for the future. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much again for watching this. Sorry it's so long. Thank you for uh, being here and continuing to support us uh, through kind of this rough patch. Um, I really appreciate it. I really do. Uh, so like, comment, subscribe, all of the YouTube things. We have a P.O. box. Uh, follow us on social media, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon, giving you more content. Uh, I'm very happy to get back into this. this I love this uh, posting content and providing it to you guys. It, it does bring me a lot of joy, and I can't wait to get back into it. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for watching, and have a good LARP! Bye!